In 1993, things were not going so well for the Gundam franchise, more precisely for Tomino's vision of Gundam. Two years prior saw the release of Gundam F91, and we know how that ended. In a confusing way to say the least. Also, by this time, two other series set in the UC but not done by Tomino were already released, War in the Pocket and Stardust Memories. Those series were sidequels that, instead of moving the story forward, more or less stayed in previous UC eras and explained and expanded certain bits of lore like the creation of the Titans. So it was up to Tomino and his crew to rekindle Gundam's fire with a new story set in the distant future of UC-153. 30 years after the events of Gundam F91 and 60 years after Charles' counterattack. So yeah, nothing was supposed to feel familiar in this setting. Well, nothing other than the fact that Earth Federation is still very crappy at doing their job. The whole premise of Gundam Victory is that Zion Amzari, the Sanskar Empire, is trying to conquer the Earth since the Federation at this point is basically doing nothing. But a resistance group called Dayuk Amzari, the League Militaire, developed a white mobile suit and is trying to stop the enemies from getting a hold of the Earth sphere. And yes, before any late UC fan crucifies me for the blasphemy of comparing Victory to earlier stories, don't get me wrong, Victory is definitely a beast of its own kind, a very brutal and dark and sad beast. Considering the fact that Tomino was battling with a crippling depression and the pressure from the Bandai takeover of Sunrise didn't help, that didn't help at all, I'm actually surprised that he managed to complete the job, let alone that he did end everything with a certain hope still present. But was it worth it? Gundam Victory is remembered as one of the most brutal series with a not so positive ending and it marked the last work that explored the UC, officially anyway. I know that there are other pieces of media, particularly manga, that explore later parts of the UC with stories that happen after Victory. But here's the thing, if we really think about it, can you name any new story element that this piece of fiction added to the whole franchise? Mobile Suit Gundam was the original. Seira inverted the roles of the factions and explored the new type myth. Double Seira added comedy, for better or worse, and defined a new psionic threat with Haman, and that threat culminated with Char and the Axis drop in Char's counterattack. Hathaway's Flash gave us a new generation's role reversal with Hathaway's Mahdi against the Federation. And even Gaia Gear gave us a protagonist char with another Zeon against the Feds. Each and every one of those series redefined something that made its narrative super compelling. Even Gaia Gear's audio dramas, if I may add. Yet, F91 and Victory are retreading old grounds with a villainous group that wants to get rid of the useless federation and conquer Earth. Opposing them is a ragtag group of young, not soldier soldiers that are doing their best to try and defend themselves with the aid of a symbol called Gundam. Hell, the Sanskar Empire has a very similar story to the rise of the Principality of Zion. More or less, but they even start with the same letter, they just took Giren's tactics and made them much more brutal. I think that that's my problem with those stories. They don't tell a new story. They just retread old concepts with newer mechanical designs. Now, I'm not saying that they're bad per se, nor anything like that. I just feel, and I say feel because I don't know for sure, it's just that they feel like stories that Tomino had to force, you know? Like when your teacher asks you for an essay with a certain number of pages and you're just looking to extend the sentences so that they fill the page without adding anything new? With F91 and Victory, Tomino was probably mentally and physically drained, yet Sunrise and Bandai wanted more, so he tried to come up with something new, but it didn't land. 
There's also the fact that with F91 he tried to start anew but the project failed miserably because of tremendous executive meddling and a couple of years later with the victory his depression was very very bad and it didn't help that the Bandai Sunrise merger made him change a lot of things to his story thanks in part to, you guessed it, executive meddling. This obviously made him feel even more miserable. So naturally, he tried to end everything. While watching the series, a question popped in my mind. Would the late UC be different if Tomino stopped expanding it after Hathaway's Flash and Gaia Gear? I'm not talking about ending it, just letting go of the reins for other authors to explore. Kind of like Unicorn, but set in late UC. What popped next was that maybe if he did stop, we wouldn't have had Journey Gundam nor g -Reco. Maybe Victory Gundam, Gundam Victory, would be better understood not as part of the main Gundam chronology, but as a prototype of the alternate continuities that would come later. What I'm trying to say is that my name is Absa and it's time now to explore the brutal and dark world of Gundam Victory, a world so bad that even Tomino himself has admitted it. A world so sad that to this day marked the end of the UC chronology as none other show has dared to go beyond UC 150s and no, I'm not counting G Savior. Even Tomino himself has parted ways with the UC, first by moving to turn a Gundam and now by retelling the story of Reconquista in the movies. So yeah, this is going to be a controversial exploration, but don't worry. I'll try to end it on a positive note. And of course, spoilers ahead. I'll go ahead and start this by saying that Gundam Victory was not my cup of tea. It's a brutal and hectic and violent show, but hey, that can be said about any Gundam show. The thing with Victory is that once it grabs you more or less in the fourth or fifth episode, it doesn't let you go until it ends. People are killed in almost every episode, Uzo is screaming in almost every episode, new mechas which look absolutely ridiculous are introduced in almost every episode, Shakti is kidnapped in almost every episode, <laughs> okay, okay, that was overly exaggerated but you get the point, it's a frantic show, a very, very, very frantic show. As you may or may not know, I've been doing Gundam explorations for quite a while now and even though I take my time, I generally try to deliver Gundam or robot videos to or thrice a month, with my intention being able to do one per week. One of the reasons that I take my time is because I have a rule to not binge watch any series that I'm planning to write about. I limit myself to two episodes per day and that system has worked for me. But wow, with victory I even struggle to end one episode. I mean, there's a lot of angst in the show, and even though it's a long series with 51 episodes, things move very, very fast, and nothing is clear enough other than the League Militaire, who are allegedly the good guys, and the Sanskar Empire, who are definitely the bad guys. But there is not a lot of character development, and character motivations to do anything are almost non existent or super shallow. Like, come on, Kagati! Regressing everyone to a baby mind with the angel's halo to a law for new types to rule? That's super absurd and insane, not in a good way. And let's not start with Katagina because come on, that's an even worse offender. Even worse than Rekua from Zeta or Anna Marie from F91, but I'm not going down that rabbit hole. The Sanskar Empire is a Sion clone that appears out of the blue and is trying to conquer Earth. But we don't know anything about them, just as we don't know anything of the League Militaire, only that they built the Gundam. There are not a lot of relatable characters and worse, not enough backstory to be invested in the setting or in the characters. Everything is just there or appears from somewhere. And by now you may be thinking, yo Absa, are you going to keep on complaining? Do you even intend to do a victory exploration? And for that, I apologize since you're totally right. After reading the interviews and everything that happened behind the scenes, I know that the victory is not one of Tomino's finest works. 
I get that it had a super troubled and rocky start to going all the way to even altering the flow of the start of the show by changing the order of the episodes so that the Gundam victory appeared in the first one instead of the fourth. And with that in mind, I can more or less understand why the show is so dark and how Tomino, in a move later made famous by Hiraki Anno, used anime as a kind of weird therapy. More or less, maybe less than more. That, as someone who is also human and has suffered from mental mishaps, I understand. Now, as a fan of new and different Gundam stories, what I don't get is why the story used previous already explored themes. I mean, we're talking about Yoshiyuki, Kill Em All, Father of Gundam, and Irion, and done by Tomino. For me, he's up there with Shoji Kawamori, Kentaro Miura, Grant Morrison, Neil Gaiman, and a few others who can be said to be one of the greatest storytellers in modern history. But Victory feels like he's repeating himself, like if he was dried and had to look back to finish the job. I think that's why I found hard to keep watching Victory. It's not because of the tone nor the violence. Berserk is way more violent and it's amazing. I wish I knew Japanese to be able to research more, but as I said before, with F91 being cut short and Victory's story happening 30 years after and absolutely no connective tissue between them or any other series, Victory feels more like an accidental prototype for the concept that we now understand as alternate Gundam timelines. Think about it. Victory aired from 1993 to 1994 and G-Fighter started to air like four weeks after the end of Victory. There's an interview with G Gundam's director Yasuhiro Imagawa where he says, My great teacher Yoshiyuki Tomino, the creator of Gundam, taught me something very important. If you continue to make a copy of a copy of a copy, eventually the image starts to degrade to nothing. That was probably said while Victory was airing and G Gundam was being developed and leaving G Gundam aside, a copy of a copy of a copy? That's very harsh of Tomino since, well, he's the one making the copies. Remember, in the 90s, there were no other Gundam timelines besides the UC and he was helming the franchise. But how much of a copy is Victory Gundam? Let's see. Child pilot stumbling upon a white mobile suit? Check, it happened on the first series. A paramilitary group that is against the main villain with the Federation being not so fond of them? Check, it happened on Double Zeta. The Gundam being extremely efficient at combat to the point of it being a symbol of hope for the allies and fear for the enemies? Check, it was even referenced on F-91. A ship called White Ark that holds the Gundam like Really? A masked villain who is not really a baddie and pilots a red mobile suit? Check! But this I will say, Chronicle is way better than Iron Mask. Anyhow, an extremist space noid group that transformed into a dictatorship that wants to get rid of the Federation's control? Check! Giren Sabi from the Principality of Zion did it first. A non-white girl who is using her voice to inflict mental damage to enemy pilots? Check! We even have two Lala stand-ins here, Maria, more or less, and Shakti, with the name Shakti being directly a Hindu word that means energy, strength or power. Speaking of Maria, she is the image of the Sanskar Empire, more or less like Mineva was for Axisian. But the true power behind the throne is Fonse Kagati for Sanskar, as Haman Karn was for Sion. There's also a crazy pink haired commander, later turned mobile suit pilot by the name Fuala Griffon, that's definitely inspired by Haman. And even though I could continue with a few other similarities, I won't, because I'm not trying to convince you that Victory is a copy nor anything like that. Quite the contrary, this is more or less the blueprint for future shows that use the same themes, just with different names and or more modern settings. You know, like Saft, Celestial Being, Tekken, and any one of those. The show may not be for everyone. In fact, it was not for me as I didn't enjoy the story nor the mechanical design. 
except the V2. That one I liked a lot, especially how Katoki managed to include a V in the upper chest and the back and how from there the wings of light emerge. Totally impractical, absolutely cool. And I say that I didn't enjoy the story not because it's a bad story, it's just that I expected that Lead UC continued to explore the neurotype myth and the Saikomu psychofram technology, but it actually went the complete opposite direction by almost discarding them for good, even though Uzo and Shakti are definitely powerful neurotypes and Fuala has the exact deranged personality that comes from transforming into a cyber neurotype. But well, maybe that was my fault for expecting that? I did see Unicorn first and then F91 and Victory later, so I'm definitely biased. If you like more grounded, well, grounded Gundam story, then this is definitely for you. The mechanical design is super weird, but it seems that that's the theme for mechanical design in the late UC. The weirder, the better. I just need to say something. The Einerad is the stupidest idea ever. A giant wheel that mobile suits get inside that doubles as a shield? I mean, sorry but not sorry, it's absolutely stupid and absurd and just plain nonsensical. The dragon that separates into individual pieces? Okay. The ant looking helmets? Okay. The helicopter transformations? Okay. But a giant wheel? Nope. That's where I draw a line. Anyway, the action scenes are great. I just think that it would be better if they skipped all of the earth stomping parts and go directly to the angel's halo. The angel's halo is a super interesting concept that can definitely be retconned to be using psycho shards or psycho frames or something like that. The concept of using new types or psychicers like they call them to induce massive hallucinations and hypnosis is something amazing. Imagine if someone like Paptimus got a hold of it or if Full Frontal used something like that with the Neo Zeong to control not only mobile suits but also humans? The Angel's Halo arc was definitely my favorite part, something that truly added new things to the whole new type mythos. It's just that the story takes too long to get there. Maybe Quantum Victory would work better as a movie or trilogy of movies, removing all of the repetitive stuff and adding more depth to the Sanskrit Empire, other than them being a Sion clone, and also give us more stories from the League Militaire and its elder members. It's weird that Tomino chose to update and give Zeta Gundam the movie treatment instead of, you know, Double Zeta or Victory. But now that I have watched all of Tomino's UC, I came up with a controversial opinion. Tomino was invested only in a UC where Char was present, not so in other parts that don't involve him, at least not after the wreck that F91 was. It may sound weird, but Tomino's UC is Char's UC. Okay, so hear me out here since I said that I was going to end this video on a positive note, but till now it seemed that I was only complaining. This is more or less my theory, but if you know of anyone else that thinks like me, please leave it in the comments. My thesis is that Tomino used the whole setting of the UC to tell Char's story. A man so important that even the son of mighty bright Noah chose to turn back on his father to continue with the legacy of Caspar. From the very beginning of Mobile Suit Gundam all the way to Hathaway's Flash, Char is present. With Gaia Gear, Tomino gave a somewhat happier ending to Char in the form of a memory clone, but Char nonetheless. That's why after Hathaway's Flash and Gaia Gear, he intended to start a fresh new saga completely disconnected from Amuro and Char. But that failed, so with victory, he just went with the flow and tried to end everything. He was not invested anymore. Even when the fans tried to link Uso's mother, Myra Miguel, with Nanai Miguel, Char's partner from way back, just for the sake of connective tissue, all the way from the Axis shock to victory, Tomino denied everything. So what happened? Well, what I'm trying to say here is that maybe Tomino's UC Gundam is the story of Char, Amuro, and those that they influenced, like Hathaway. 
Maybe Chomino didn't want to write anything after Hathaway's Flash and or Gaia Gear. You see, with F91 he tried to start anew but failed miserably because of executive meddling and with Victory, specifically because of executive meddling, he tried to end everything. And remember, we're in the 90s. The end of Victory meant the end of the UC main series as we're not even close to the origin, Thunderbolts or Unicorn. And even if you think about it, more recent series set in the UC return to one of two things. Zeon or Char. Thunderbolt returned to the one year war conflict with a new Gundam against a new Saku and Unicorn. Well, Unicorn was even less subtle with the return of a Char, a Neo Zeon and even a white Unicorn. I think that Universal Century Gundam, particularly Tamino's early vision, works best when it relies on Char or Amuro to a lesser extent. Just like the DC Universe relies on Superman or Batman. Just like the Marvel Universe relies on the Avengers or the Fantastic Four or even the X-Men. Even Macross keeps returning to Maximilian Genius. I may be wrong, but now that I watch both F91 and Victory, I truly believe that for Tomino, Char was the beginning and the ending of the UC. Mobile Suit Gundam started it and in a way Gaia Gear ended it. With F91 and Victory he began messing around with the idea of something akin to alternate universal centuries, something that would later be touched more in turn a Gundam. And maybe Reconquista, but I can speak for g Reco since I haven't watched it. Now, this doesn't mean that F91 or Victory don't have their merit nor their place in the UC chronology. They still exist and have very interesting ideas that have been explored either in mangas or even in Gunpla with the F90 series. I already said that the Angel's Halo is a super interesting concept and the Crossbone Vanguard was explored beautifully in the Crossbone manga. Curious thing is that those explorations are not done by Tomino. On the other hand, for all the love and or hate that Fukui gets for Unicorn, he did a great job in reviving the interest in Universal Century Gundam with, of course, a literal char clone, a new Neo Zeon and new depths for the Neurotype myth. And that's all of Tomino's ideas, just done by somebody else with a more modern voice. Maybe in the future we'll get to revise those errors with new authors who add a little bit more meat to the barebone ideas presented by a worn out Tomino. Hopefully that does happen soon. And yes, I know that more or less that happens in the mangas by Yuichi Hasegawa, but I'm talking about animated projects. Right now there's a lot of interest in the UC with the Hathaway movies, the super unknown Unicorn 2 project, the UC Next 100 and even the new movie Kukuruk's Doan's Island. And even though the UC Next 100 banner does include Formula 91 and Victory, there has been no love for late UC. And that's a very bad thing since well, those stories are still part of the Gundam legacy. They may not involve Char nor Amuro, but they do have, in their own strange and brutal way, a charm that no other story has. Gundam Victory may not be for me. I grew up with superhero sagas that spanned many, many, many comics, so I do like long narratives. But I know that there's a lot of people that precisely because of the modularity and unconnectedness of F91 and Victory like them better with the added bonus that they still pertain to the overall universal century. All in all, Gundam Victory has everything to be a great show if you're not expecting a lot of continuity from early UC. It has all the classic Gundam themes and even though the tone is a little bit more bleak than others, it has a happyish, hopefulish ending. Even for Katagina. This series marked the end of Tomino's grand Universal Century saga, and for many years it marked the end of the main UC series. It's amazing how the franchise, instead of going numb and dead because of victory, managed to grow exponentially with the advent of alternate timelines, first with G Gundam and then with the super popular Gundam Wing. Many years had to pass in order for Tomino to recuperate his health and his will to return to the Gundam franchise. Yet, when he returned, he returned big time with the marvelously weird 
Turn A Gundam. His first Gundam story not set on Universal Century. More or less. As for victory, well, nothing is set in stone, but to this day there has not been anything new set in that era. At least nothing anime. Maybe in the future I'll dig into the manga and see how things turn out for everyone. But for now, Victory stands as one of the most divisive Gundam entries, with many people loving it for finally freeing from the psionic influence and many people not liking it for the bleakness of the story. And for me, well, it may be unofficial, but I'm pretty sure that victories were the idea for the altered Gundam timelines was first developed. So, in a way, it's thanks to Gundam Victory's darkness and weirdness that we got G-Fighter, Gundam Wing, Turn A Gundam, and all of the rest amazing Gundam timelines. Ladies and gentlemen, we've made it. We finally made it to the end of the animated original run of Universal Century. What an interesting journey it has been. From the greatest of the greatest like Zeta to the super pointless like narrative, all is good. I liked everything, just once more than others. It's been an amazing ride and as I said before, for me, Tomino is one of the greatest storytellers of the modern era. He may have had a hiccup with F91 and Victory, but Turn A Gundam made up for it. And maybe Reconquista, but I don't know about that one. It's thanks to him that we have Gundam and well, I hope that it didn't come out too harsh on Victory. It's just that conceptually it disappointed me a little bit. But then again, it was my fault as I was expecting something entirely different. Judged as a standalone series, well, it's still very dark and angsty, but it's not that bad of a series. And I have to say that the mechanical design got creative. <laughs> now, would I recommend it? That's a tough one since it's a very long series. With F91, it was easy. Yeah, go ahead and watch it, it's just a movie. With Victory, it's harder to commit since its story plots and bits are somewhat reused from previous stories and, well, they really don't add much to the overall narrative of the UC and, well, it probably works best if you're a UC fan already or if you want to experience Tomino at his worst. I really couldn't believe it when Yuso's mother got decapitated with a giant wheel and her head landed in Yuso's hands. That was brutal. So yeah, experience victory at your own peril. Anyway, I hope that you liked my exploration of Gundam's victory's place in the whole Universal Century saga, particularly Tomino's Universal Century. I really wish that in a not so distant future, Sunrise manages to convince Tomino and get the rights for Gaia Gear and retool or retcon the story for it to be the true ending of the Char saga and Tomino's Universal Century, instead of you know, the super ambiguous ending of Gundam Victory. And well, regarding the next videos, I'm definitely going to continue talking about Gundam. I just don't really know where to move. I was thinking of Thunderbolt or maybe Stardust's memory that has Gundams designed by Shoji Kawamori. And speaking of him, I'm also doing macros explorations, so please check those videos. By the time of Gundam's Victory Exploration, I've already done the original macros, Do You Remember Love, Macros 2, and also Macros Plus, with Macro 7 coming out very, very soon. As for the other series, or any other robot series, please let me know in the comments what other, <clears throat> what other mecha franchises do you think are worthy of watching and exploring. On the back of my mind, I have Escaflone, and maybe Maybe, maybe the rebuild of Eva? And, well, as you may or may not know, my name is Absa. You can continue the conversation over at Twitter, where you can follow me at Absalonicas, and on Instagram, where I post pictures of my figures, my cats, and sometimes even myself. I'll be trying to talk more about anime, comics, and maybe even figures. Until next time, always remember that in fiction lies power. So let's use it to forge a new type of story. Our hero's journey.